Good afternoon. Thanks everyone for joining us today. We are here to talk about the Give Atlanta Challenge. Today's focus is fundraising strategy. Uh, for those of you that uh, are you know, new to uh, the campaign planning at this point, we did host a webinar a few weeks back that was focused on getting started with the campaign. And so that webinar uh, is really going to focus on all the upfront steps to get your page up and running on the platform and answer all your basic questions. We'll review a sum of that today, uh, but focus primarily on fundraising strategy. So if you do have more questions uh, along the lines of the intro, getting started, you'll wanna visit the nonprofit toolkit and watch the recording from our previous webinar. Uh, we will also be recording today's webinar and it will be up on the toolkit uh, after we're done today. Uh, and uh, just a note, if you do have any questions throughout today's webinar, please feel free to type them into the GoToWebinar control panel on the right-hand side of your screen. Our agenda for today, we will start with some of the challenge basics. So again, that first webinar is going to go into much more detail, but we're going to uh, reiterate some of the most important things uh, about the challenge, some of the key basics you'll want to be aware of. We'll talk about the prizes and the bonuses that are available, as well as some strategy for those prizes and bonuses and rules to keep in mind for eligibility. We'll focus on campaign strategy. Uh, aside from those prizes and bonuses, what else can you build in your uh, fundraising campaign to get the most out of this year's effort? We will close out with uh, some reminders on a few important details, dates, et cetera, and end with Q&A. So again, type any questions into that control panel if you do have them throughout. My name is Bethany. I'm the director of the community team here at My Cause, uh, working with uh, Atlanta Magazine uh, to support this challenge. So we'll start here with just a few uh, reminders about the basics of this campaign. So the Give Atlanta Challenge is hosted by the Atlanta Magazine. I believe it is the, oh, I'm not gonna guess, I can't remember the year of the challenge, but uh, it has come back this year. Um, it has happened multiple years. Um, it is going to be a 17-day campaign this year, so a bit shorter uh, than previous years. The fundraising is going to kick off on October 7th at 12 p.m. Eastern, and it's going to end October 23rd, also at 12 p.m. Eastern. So that will be the length of the fundraising challenge. Um, and this year, there is $160,000 in advertising spend uh, that will be available to participating organizations as a part of those prizes and bonuses that I mentioned. So later in the webinar, we will walk through the detail of those prizes and bonuses, um, what you have to do to be eligible and win those bonuses, and uh, we'll go into detail about what the uh, actual uh, prize uh, is for each of those challenges. And new this year, Mighty Cause is the platform partner uh, working with Atlanta Magazine to put on this event. So Mighty Cause is the technology platform that the fundraising website is being hosted on. We're also uh, your main go-to contact for customer support, uh, any technical questions throughout the challenge, um, on your page, uh, et cetera. And before the end of today's webinar, we will go through uh, and remind you how to get in touch with our customer support team if you do have questions throughout. So before we dig too deep into the rest of this, just a quick reminder on some of the key things that your nonprofit needs to do for this challenge. The first is register to participate and uh, everyone is already registered at this point, so uh, you can cross something off of your to-do list. The next items will be to update your Mighty Cause profile. We'll cover some of that briefly today, but again, if you're looking for more detail on how to edit that profile, what options you have available, you can look at that first webinar or access our support center, support.mightycause.com, 
We've got lots of resources and walkthroughs there for making the most of that profile page. And after you build your profile, then it's really time to plan the fundraising campaign. So how will you promote your campaign on social media, email, et cetera? Um, who might you invite to start a peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser on behalf of your organization? All of those inputs that are gonna go into making your campaign successful, and then the challenge kicks off and it's time to raise money for your cause. So once uh, all organizations should have access to uh, your organization's account on the platform, uh, that was what that registration process uh, was helping us do to make sure that you have access to your organization's account on the platform. When you log in, you'll see in the very upper right corner of the screen is a user menu that you should be allowed, you should be able to click on your nonprofit's profile, your dashboard. When you click on that dashboard, you'll open up uh, the dashboard, which allows you to really navigate all of uh, what you'll need on the platform to manage your fundraising. So just a quick overview of what you'll see on that dashboard and what you can manage where. First will be your overview. That'll have a to-do list for you. These are five of the key items uh, that we consider uh, important to building a good-looking profile and filling out your account. Uh, you'll also see some key metrics here as well about your fundraising. So uh, while it might be a little blank right now, if you don't have a lot of active giving going on, once the challenge is up and running, it'll be really helpful to come back and view your metrics uh, on this overview page. Only administrators to your organization will have access to this overview, of course. Next item down the dashboard is your fundraising tools. This is where you'll access your organization's profile. That's the main page that most organizations will use to uh, customize and share for the campaign. Um, but you'll also have access to the campaigns tab, which is where you can manage, uh, if for example, you start a team fundraiser or you have individuals start peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers on your behalf, you can view and manage all of those under the campaign screen, which you'll find under fundraising. You also have the ability to add a matching grant to your page, customize your checkout flow, et cetera, all under this fundraising tab. Next is your reports. This is gonna be where you access all of your data. So your donations report, uh, and then post event when you're trying to access your disbursement report to reconcile the disbursement that you received, you will have a report uh, that gives you all the details there. And then finally, the last item down on the dashboard is your settings. And settings is really where you can do a lot of the management of your account on the platform. So the ability to update your organization uh, information, let's say, for example, your address, you know, your display address needs to be updated uh, or your legal address, um, the Mighty Cause platform imports data regularly from the IRS database. So your name and address should be uh, up to date with what is on file with the IRS, uh, though currently the IRS is experiencing some delays in updating their data. So um, if you do need to update your organization's legal name or address, for example, you'll do that through your settings tab. You'll have the ability to upload documentation uh, to verify those changes. You'll also be able to add or remove administrators from your account. So when you registered for Give Atlanta, you were given access to your nonprofit's account on the platform, but you are welcome to add other members of your team, maybe volunteers, a finance accounting person, social media manager, board member, whomever you need on your team, you're welcome to add them. You can have up to 10 administrators per organization with access to your page. And the final thing that you can do here, we'll talk more in a moment, uh, is sign up for electronic funds transfer uh, to receive your disbursements via direct deposit. <clears throat> so we've talked a little bit so far about the profile. Again, this is uh, the page that most nonprofits will use as their central page to share with supporters during the challenge. So this is the page that you're gonna wanna customize add 
content to add photos, videos. There's inline editor right on this page. So you have the ability to add formatting like bullets and numbers and bold and italics and change text size, for example. All of these things, plus adding videos, photos, etc., really helps the story jump off the page for the donor that is visiting your page. So definitely encourage you to take the time to customize this page upload a background image, choose a theme color that fits with your logo, and really use it as a chance to tell your story uh, about why donors should be giving to your organization as a part of this challenge. So after you've customized your profile page, what donors will see when they click on the link in your email or social media post, for example, you also have the option to customize the experience when they're actually in their donation process. So uh, again, in the fundraising tab of your dashboard, you will have the ability to select checkout flow, and that's where you can customize this information, both what's happening when they make their donation and then immediately post donation, that thank you experience as well, you can customize. So. You can do everything from choosing what data you collect. Uh, automatically, the platform will, autom will collect the name and the email address of any donor. But if you'd like to collect the physical address, the phone number, company, et cetera, you can toggle on additional fields uh, that will ask donors to complete that uh, information in the checkout flow. You can also add custom donation suggestions for custom donation suggestions to reinforce the impact of your organization, your mission for the donor when they're making their gift. So by tying a dollar amount to a certain tangible impact, it really makes it easier for the donor to understand and see the value of their gift. It's also a nice way to perhaps push donors uh, marginally up a tier. Um, if you have, you know, a donor was coming to make a 20 or $25 gift, but you have a very compelling impact that they'll be able to have if they make a $35 gift or a $50 gift, for example, you might have the option to kind of move them up the path there. So we encourage you to customize those uh, custom donation suggestions. <clears throat> Once you've customized the experience, you have the option to preview the experience start to finish just as a donor would see so that you know exactly what it will look like for a donor when they're coming to complete their donation. Um, and then, as I mentioned, you also have the opportunity to customize the thank you experience. So there's two key ways that you can do that. The first will be a thank you page. So when donors complete their donation, the next thing that they see on the screen is a thank you page that will pop up. That thank you page will automatically include some social sharing tools. Uh, by default, encourage them to share on social media. But then it'll also have a space where it shows any message that you have built into your thank you page. So just like on your profile page, um, this thank you page will have an inline editor. So you can add formatting, you can add a photo, you can even add a video here if you have one. And this is a great place to add some kind of personal touch from, you know, perhaps your executive director, a board member, or uh, maybe the community you serve in some way. Um, really start that post donation stewardship process here uh, by personalizing that experience. And then aside from the thank you page, you also have access to um, add custom language to the thank you receipt. So immediately after a donor makes their donation, they will see the thank you page on screen, as I mentioned, and then they'll receive an automatic Thank you tax receipt. So all of the tax information is included by default from the platform. And you have the opportunity to add some custom language that goes into that email that's sent to, to the donor. So whatever you build in that thank you page, it just can be a quick copy paste to add that into the uh, thank you receipt. And then again, you're just continuing that experience continuing the story for the donor that they've seen from your email to the donation page to the thank you page to the thank you email 
all kind of tying together a reinforcement about what their donation is really uh, going to do, what impact it can really have for your organization. And once you build the thank you page and the receipt, you also have the ability to preview both of those as well. So you'll have the option to click a preview of the donation or the thank you page, excuse me, and you can also send yourself a preview donation receipt. So definitely recommend before the challenge starts, before donations open, uh, take the time to preview that experience start to finish. Donations and reporting. So anyone who is an administrator for your organization will automatically receive an email notification when a donation is made during the challenge. So anybody who is an administrator will receive these by default. But if you'd like to turn those off, if you have the great problem of getting way too many donations and it's clogging up your inbox, you are welcome to turn off these notifications in your user profile on the platform. You'll see uh, email uh, notification settings there, so you can turn that off. And at any time, you or anyone who is an administrator for your nonprofit's account on the platform can log in and view donor data in real time during the challenge. So you don't have to wait until the end to access your donor data. You can access it at any time during the challenge and have a good solid understanding of who has and has not yet given to your campaign. You will see on screen uh, a quick view of the donations report with some of the key details, donor name, amount, date, uh, email address, et cetera but you can always download the report as a CSV file, uh, and that will include all the relevant information about the donation, uh, including any of those additional data fields you've chosen to collect. <clears throat> you have, uh, you see on the screenshot here, there are different filters available. So by default, you'll always see the last 30 days of activity, um, but you can update that if you'd like. So during the challenge, if you're just trying to look at a smaller window or at the end of the challenge, if you just want to look at all the donations that came in during the challenge window, you'll be able to update that time period uh, in the filter and just see the specific data you're looking for. <clears throat> or of course, you can search if you're looking for uh, a specific donor trying to confirm whether they gave or not, you have the ability to search in the report. Um, you also have the ability to add an offline donation to your page totals. Uh, keep in mind, offline donations don't count for uh, the fundraising challenge. Um, they won't count for bonuses. But if you do receive an offline donation from uh, you know, a, a major donor, a corporate partner, et cetera, and you'd like your page metrics to reflect that gift, you are welcome to add that offline donation via your donations uh, report here. Um, and just a final note on donations. Donations can be made to your page uh, now and after the challenge. Uh, there's many organizations that are currently using uh, the platform for uh, other, uh, other campaigns. So you are welcome to accept donations at any time, um, but please know that only donations that are made during the challenge window, those times that I mentioned already, um, and we'll reiterate at the end as a final reminder, only donations made within the challenge window will count for the challenge. Disbursements, uh, of course, very important to make sure that all organizations have the process set up to receive their funds. You can sign up for electronic funds transfer disbursement via the settings tab of your dashboard. That's that final item down on your dashboard. <clears throat> If you are signed up for EFT, you'll receive your funds twice a month. Any donations from the 1st to the 15th of the month will be sent via direct deposit on the 25th of that same month. Any donations that come in from the 16th to the end of the month, those will be sent on the 10th of the following month. If you elect not to sign up for direct deposit, uh, which you don't need to do, uh, but we do encourage it, but if you elect not to, uh, we will send a check once a month. So any donations in uh, the month of October, for example, will all be sent uh, by a check around November 10th. It will be subject to a $5 paper check fee. And no matter how you're receiving your disbursements, you will have access to a disbursement report so that you can 
<clears throat> access the details and reconcile what donations are included in what disbursements that you receive. So again, that was just a key overview. Uh, some of the most important things on the platform, getting started, customizing your page, more information on the toolkit if you're looking for that. And now we're gonna jump into information on prizes and bonuses. So we'll start with the grand prizes, uh, the top three organizations that raise the most dollars during the entire length of the challenge will be the winners of the grand prizes. So again, kicking off Wednesday, October 7th at 12 p.m. noon, ending October 23rd, also at 12 p.m. noon. That is a full length of the challenge and grand prizes will be available. The competition for grand prizes will run the full length of the challenge. So the first uh, prize winner <clears throat> will receive $75,540 in advertising for the calendar year. Second prize, $38,730 in advertising. And the third prize is $19,860 in advertising for the calendar year. So lots of great opportunities there. These grand prizes will be, uh, as I mentioned, through the length of the challenge, uh, there will be a leaderboard visible on the challenge website so that you can see your progress in that competition for the grand prizes. So keep an eye on the challenge website and you'll be able to see your position in the standings. If you know that only the top three organizations win and your organization is in fifth place, for example, gives you the opportunity to know where you stand and then you can share that information with donors and supporters to help them uh, understand why they need to make their gift, share your page, etc., so that you continue to move up the leaderboard. So um, definitely keep an eye on your standings and share that information with your supporters. Ask for their help. Uh, let them know uh, what's at stake if you are able to win one of these grand prizes. And because it's a multi-week challenge, you'll want to plan ahead uh, for how to sustain momentum throughout the length of the campaign. So if you plan your email strategy, for example, you don't want to uh, focus all your energy on emails uh, the first day or couple days of the campaign and then allow your momentum to uh, trickle off uh, before the end. Uh, so planning ahead now, thinking about what emails you'll send at what times, uh, for example, is a nice way to uh, set up the cadence so that you do have continued momentum building throughout the challenge uh, to uh, keep yourself in the running for the grand prizes. Um, and just to note that the standings are preliminary and unofficial. Uh, the leaderboard is a really great way to track your progress, see how you're doing and compared to other participating organizations but all donations are verified post-event just to make sure that the leaderboard standings are in fact accurate. <clears throat> so aside from the top fundraiser grant, uh, grant prizes, for example, there are also bonus challenges that will be going on throughout the challenge, uh, giving you more opportunity to win and helping your organization uh, kind of build in some of that excitement and engagement to keep the momentum going. So bonus challenge one uh, will be the first half of the challenge window starting uh, Wednesday, October 7th at noon, right at the kickoff of the challenge, ending Thursday, October 15th at 11.59 a.m. So this first bonus challenge, uh, the top two organizations that raise the most dollars in this initial window will win bonus challenge one, a full page four color ad for first prize and a half page ad for the second prize winner. And then in the second half of the challenge, bonus challenge two, the uh, organization, the top two organizations that have the most unique donors to their campaign they will be the winners for bonus challenge two. So again, full page ad for the winner and half page ad for the second prize. That challenge period is Thursday, October 15th through Friday, October 23rd. <clears throat> These challenge 
windows, the details, etc., is all accessible on the Give Atlanta website. So make sure to check that out uh, if you do want to uh, verify, confirm your details on what challenge starts when, etc. All that information is available on the website. And during, again, during the whole length of the challenge, uh, alongside the grand prize competition, there's also going to be a fundraiser bonus challenge. So the organization that has the most active fundraisers during the length of the challenge will win uh, $5,000 in digital advertising spend at atlantamagazine.com. So again, from Wednesday, October 7th, all the way to the end on October 23rd, the participating organization that has the most active fundraisers will win this prize. To be considered an active fundraiser, the, organ the, the page must be published before the challenge begins. So uh, the fundraiser must come to the platform, create their fundraising page, and publish that page before the challenge begins so that we can include it in our list of participating fundraisers. And then during the length of the challenge, before the end, they need to receive donations from five unique donors. Doesn't matter uh, what those donation amounts are. Uh, minimum donation on the platform is $5, um, but they do need five unique individuals to support their campaign to show that they are an active fundraiser. And we'll talk a little bit more uh, later in the training about peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser strategy, some of the tools that you can use on the platform to make the most of peer-to-peer -peer fundraising as a part of your Give Atlanta challenge. So a strategy for these bonus challenges. Um, there are, aside from the grand prizes, three uh, bonuses available. It definitely makes sense to think ahead of time what bonus, you know, what one or two bonuses, for example, uh, might be um, make the most sense for your organization, what are you going to focus on? That way you can really uh, channel your efforts um, and focus your email, etc., cetera, on uh, the, either the type of strategy, if it's the fundraiser versus unique donors versus dollars raised, or the timing, bonus challenge one versus bonus challenge two. Uh, again, you'll be able to track your progress on the leaderboard. So the uh, bonus challenge one and bonus challenge two will also have leaderboards available on the website. Um, so you'll be able to see how you're doing in those challenges as well. Uh, you can encourage any of your major donors that might be able to, that might be giving a gift. You can encourage them when during the challenge would be most helpful to make their gift. Uh, again, time your outreach um, according to the challenge window and uh, making the most of those challenge opportunities. And finally, um, something I like to remind organizations is even if you don't win one of the challenges, it still can be valuable to use it as a communication point with your donors. It's an extra incentive for them to make their gift. It's exciting for them to know that their donation can have an even bigger potential impact for your organization. Uh, so even if you're not Sure, you really can win, though um, everyone has lots of great opportunities to win. Um, definitely encourage you to think about how to talk about the bonuses, how to talk about the grand prizes as a part of your campaign communication strategy. A few um, reminders on the challenge rules. Uh, all the official rules for the challenge are available also on the challenge website, so you can refer for more information uh, to the site. Um, but just to call out a couple of the most important, the most uh, common ones. Uh, first is, for an organization to be eligible for the grand prize, they must have 10 unique donors to their campaign. Um, an organization cannot make a donation to its own campaign to secure a prize. Now, this does not mean that a board member, a staff member, a volunteer can't donate to support your organization's campaign. That's a great thing if they do that, and we certainly encourage that. It just means that they can't use your organization's credit card to make a donation with funds that your organization already has just for the purpose of securing a prize. 
Um, only donations that are processed in the challenge window will be eligible, as I mentioned before. Um, don't wait until the last minute to make a gift. Uh, if a gift is processed at 12.05 p.m., uh, it won't count as a part of the challenge or be eligible for the prizes. So uh, don't wait too late uh, to encourage your donors to make their gift. Um, any attempts to abuse or mask your email address uh, to increase uh, donation count can result in disqualification. Um, as I mentioned before, uh, donations will be reviewed and verified post-event. Um, and finally, uh, only the authorized credit card holder can make a donation on the platform. Uh, this is important for credit card companies uh, in terms of PCI compliance and uh, their standards. Uh, only the authorized card holder is allowed to make a donation. So again, full uh, rules available on the challenge website. We just wanted to call out a few uh, here as uh, reminders. And so now we're going to jump into campaign strategy. Aside from uh, some of that prize and bonus strategy that we just covered, uh, digging more into other strategies that you can build into your campaign, including matching grants and uh, a big focus on peer-to-peer -peer, since of course, uh, that is a great strategy to keep in mind to make your campaign successful, but also will help uh, make your organization um, in better running for the fundraiser bonus challenge. So the first uh, thing to talk about here is really mapping out your campaign ahead of time. Um, we have some uh, events on our platform that are 24 hour campaign. This is a, a multi uh, week event, 17 days. So you want to make sure that you have a plan, a schedule that keeps the momentum going throughout, um, both for your supporters, donors that are seeing your emails and your progress, but also for your internal team that is working on this campaign. Setting uh, mini goals throughout, um, you know, getting to 10 donors by the end of the first week, for example. Uh, doing uh, little, breaking it up into little goals like that will help keep your internal team uh, on track throughout, um, but also give you more to talk about with your supporters and help break down perhaps a larger goal that you have for the overall campaign. So uh, you can break the challenge into, you know, into two as the bonus challenges are and uh, think about what you want to accomplish in the first half of the challenge and then the second half of the challenge, for example and whatever works for your organization. Um, but really creating these mini goals helps to make sure you are on track for any larger goals. And, and those can really be varied, whether it's the number of donors that you'd like to have give to your campaign, uh, total dollars you'd like to raise during the challenge, the number of peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers that you'd like to um, activate, the number of new donors you'd like to have give to your campaign, Whatever it might be, um, it's important each organization determine what their goals are ahead of time with the campaign. And then once you determine those goals, making sure that you have an overall goal as well as uh, smaller goals to kind of keep your, uh, keep your efforts on track throughout the campaign. So when the campaign kicks off uh, Wednesday, October 7th at noon, um, it can be really helpful to have a few seed donations, have a few donors that are ready to make their gift right soon after the challenge starts. And this can kind of help break the ice with some of the other donors so that when your first email lands or your social media post goes out, for example, your page isn't starting from zero, uh, but it's starting from some momentum. You already have some donors that have showed their support, so other donors coming to the page will want to be a part of that, will want to make their gift. So of course, every organization might have a slightly different uh, set of people that are best for this uh, type of ask, but could be a board member, could be uh, high level staff at your organization, could be some really committed volunteers, um, anyone that might be you know, in the inner circle of your uh, nonprofit organization. And so communicating with these donors ahead of time whether it's by phone or personal note, making sure they know when the challenge starts and encouraging them uh, to wait and make their gift once the challenge has opened, um, but have them 
have them kind of ready to, uh, to make their gift right at the beginning to help kick off your campaign. Uh, we always encourage organizations to secure a matching grant as a part of their uh, fundraising campaign whenever possible. And that's because all the same reasons that the uh, bonus challenges and the grand prizes are uh, an exciting incentive, uh, the matching grant is another layer of its incentive. And that's specifically focused for your organization so you know you will uh, secure that match if you meet a certain number of donors or dollars uh, raised. So uh, our typical um, advice to nonprofits when figuring out how to secure a matching grant, where to start, of course, the first step is always to prospect. So think about who might be a good fit to be a matching donor. Could be a board member, it could be a group of board members all making a smaller donation that you lump together to be a larger board match. It could be a major donor that usually makes their gift at the end of the year and you're encouraging them to move their donation a little bit earlier uh, in the calendar year so that you can use their gift as a match. Could be a corporate partner, a local business. Um, uh, each organization, again, will have a little bit of a different audience, uh, but it, it's great to start with that prospecting and identify who might be a good fit. Uh, and taking the time to really learn about these donors and uh, get to know what their interests are, um, and then make their ask in accordance with those interests. So for example, a corporate partner is going to have different interests than uh, an individual donor. For example, a corporate partner might care a lot more about uh, how their logo and their company name is going to be displayed and communicated as a part of the match. Um, whereas a major donor might actually not want their name associated. They might rather remain anonymous. Their goal might be more about the impact for your organization. Um, it, you know, it, it, it will depend on your donor, but taking the time to learn about the donor will allow you to craft your ask so that you're appealing specifically to what they will care about. Um, October 7th is, you know, right around the corner. <laughs> It'll be here before we know it. So uh, with a relatively shorter time frame, uh, it's likely best to focus on existing relationships that you already have. Uh, it can take a longer time to develop brand new relationships with corporate partners especially. Um, so uh, you, you might be better served focusing on existing relationships that you have, uh, maybe individuals that have donated uh, as a match in the past, or larger donors uh, from the past, trying to convert them to a matching donor. Um, and uh, we'll talk more on the next slide, but we've got some flexible options in terms of what that matching grant actually looks like. Um, the goal is really to have this match as a fundraising tool that gets other donors, supporters, visitors to your page excited about that uh, additional impact. So once you secure your match, you'll want to add that match to your challenge page. And again, it's, it's really a display feature. The donor does not need to pay their match online. Um, they're welcome to send a check directly to your organization if they'd like. But just like offline donations, any, um, any matches that are not paid through the platform won't count for your challenge totals. So uh, part of your strategy, if you are going towards one of those grants or uh, bonus challenges, would be to encourage your matching donor to make their gift online. Um, as I mentioned, there are flexible options in terms of what the match actually looks like. You can set up a dollar for dollar match so that if you raise $5,000, you earn a $5,000 match, or you can do a two to one match or a three to one match, uh, raising $250. Uh, online through donors earns you a $500 matching grant, for example. Uh, it's, uh, again, up to you and the donor and what you think will really appeal to your uh, supporters. You can also do a match based on the number of donations. So perhaps instead of a dollar focus, you'd like to have a match uh, that is only met if you have uh, 50 donations made to your page, for example. Um, and any donations to uh, your participating fundraisers, uh, you can also have those 
count to your matching grant as well. You have that option when you're setting up your match. Um, so uh, really, it is it is a display tool for engagement. And as the campaign is going on, uh, that match value will count down. So if you had a five thousand dollar match, for example, and you need to raise, you know, five hundred dollars more to meet that match that countdown will be happening on your page to encourage donors to make their gift to add urgency to add excitement so you'll have that on the page when you add your match to the uh to the platform but you also want to add that match in any of your communications so including it in your emails posting on social media as you have progress towards the match uh, that's a great way to uh, keep that momentum going throughout the challenge keep having new and exciting things to talk about with your supporters throughout the full length of the challenge. And um, we've talked a bit about peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, but now kind of uh, jumping in a little bit more uh, to, to why peer-to-peer -peer fundraising is important for this challenge. Uh, aside from the fact that there is uh, uh, advertising spend available on the table if you win this, this uh, challenge, uh, it can be a really great strategy for other reasons as well. So activating ambassadors can look a lot of different ways. Uh, it doesn't have to be peer-to-peer -peer fundraising to be you know, helpful to an organization. You can have individuals that share your page with their friends and family on email, uh, share all your posts on social media, help spread the word. Um, there can be lots of different layers of an ambassador, but what we're gonna focus primarily on is peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. Um, when uh, you have individuals that create peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers on behalf of your organization, it just expands your traditional outreach, net, outreach network. Uh, you can acquire new donors. Uh, you may not have, uh, you only have a certain number of contacts in your donor database, but uh, each of the peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers that you sign up, they have a different universe of contacts at their disposal. So it allows you to bring in more individuals, therefore bringing more funds in. And all of that will help you climb up the ranks in the leaderboard. So not just the fundraiser bonus challenge, but the, the grand prizes and the other bonus challenges, any funds and or donors that are brought in to your organization through these peer-to-peer -peer efforts uh, will help increase your overall totals. Uh, and some lesser uh, focused on details here and benefits of peer-to-peer -peer fundraising are, are the relationship that it builds between you and that peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser. It's a great step kind of on the path to, you know, they start as somebody who attends an event and maybe they make a donation once, maybe they make a donation a couple times, they become a recurring donor, then you move them into a peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser. It's a great way to keep moving donors along a path of involvement and engagement with your organization. And it often has the byproduct of uh, adding uh, a number of new personal stories about uh, the impact of your organization. So uh, when somebody starts a peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser and they share why they are so committed to your work, what's the experience they've had with the work that you've done? Is it them personally? Do they have a family member or a friend that has served by your programming? Did they adopt their dog from your uh, rescue? Whatever it might be, those personal stories are. Um, great for your organization and just kind of terms of building your communications um, but also it's those personal stories that are really going to get their friends and family excited about making a donation so one of the best ways to take advantage of peer-to-peer -peer fundraising on the platform is through team fundraising um, whether you've done peer-to-peer -peer fundraising before or not um, a group setting like team fundraising makes it easier for uh, individuals that want to be a peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser, it makes it easier for them um, because they're a part of something that's bigger. Maybe they haven't fundraised before, so kind of makes them feel like they're not figuring it out all on their own. Uh, and it can kind of build in a nice extra friendly competition between your fundraisers with that leaderboard that you'll have on the page. You'll also have the ability to create a page template for them. So when they join your team, uh, they don't have to do very much to get their page up and running. Uh, it's most of the fields are already ready for them. They can just click publish and go. They certainly can customize it if they'd like, but it can be a lot uh, quicker uh, and easier for them. 
Uh, you can use this, uh, this page and the management tools to communicate with them during the length of the challenge. Um, you can provide resources, tips, um, you know, templates. Uh, if, if you have a bunch of people that haven't fundraised before, just putting together a very quick uh, email template, some copy that they can use to plug into their own email so that they don't have to start from scratch. Maybe they've never asked for a donation before, or maybe they haven't uh, talked about your organization in this way before. Giving them some of that information, giving them some photos or a logo can really streamline the process for them in that outreach. So email strategy, of course, again, over the length of uh, the challenge, you'll want to plan out your uh, your timing and your schedule so that you uh, keep the excitement going. You don't hit your donors too many times, um, but you have a nice cadence that that really allows you to stay uh, stay top of mind and uh, connect with those donors that you'd like to uh, invite to participate in the challenge. Um, you want to create a short and a consistent, simple message. Um, I see emails all the time from nonprofits that are really long, detailed, in depth, go into so much information about the work that they do. And while that's really wonderful, donors don't always need all that information, and they're not really that great at reading lots of information. Uh, attention spans are short. So think about how you can uh, make your message really simple and clear um, and, and what's going to appeal to them. So how can you tell a story? in your communications uh, that's going to appeal to your donors and get them to make their gift. Segmentation, of course, always important in uh, building a solid email strategy. So, you know, recurring donors might get a little bit of a different message than those that haven't made a donation yet this year, for example. Um, and something you might want to consider in particular, those that donate early on in your campaign, those that donate during bonus challenge one, for example, how will you communicate to them as you get towards the end of the challenge? Uh, it doesn't, just because somebody donates at the beginning of your challenge doesn't mean that they absolutely cannot be asked for another donation before the end of the challenge, but you'll want to be careful and thoughtful about how they receive another donation ask. So uh, making sure that you're removing people that give uh, from your communications or just developing a specific plan for once a donor has made a donation during your challenge uh, campaign, how will you communicate them with them during the rest of the challenge? Always testing your emails, um, previewing them, checking them out on mobile. Uh, the donation platform is optimized for mobile and it's gonna be a great experience, but uh, most donors will start opening their email on um, mobile. So you wanna make sure that that experience, uh, you know, from the size of the call to action button, it, for example, uh, is really easy and seamless on mobile. And though it appears um, like I wouldn't need to say this, uh, it's always helpful just to remind every email that you send, make sure there's a very clear ask, a big donate now button with a link to your donation page. Social media strategy to complement your email schedule. Um, you don't have to post on every single uh, social media outlet that exists. Um, look and see where your followers are. Where do you have most engagement? Where do people comment, like, post, etc.? And then focus your energy there. If you plan out your content ahead of time, schedule posts. That allows you some time during the challenge to be reactive and responsive if you do uh, have other, um, you know, have some of your supporters comment or post or like, whatever, you can engage with them. And it also will leave room if you, you know, have a matching grant, for example, you can add updates about how you're doing in your progress towards that match. Um, if you are at the top of a leaderboard and a bonus challenge, for example, you can add that in. Uh, but scheduling some content ahead of time will, will allow you to uh, be more responsive um, for those things that are happening live during the challenge that you want to add in. You may consider uh, boosting some of your posts uh, to increase your audience. Um, and just like on the platform, on your profile page, uh, the more engaging the content uh, is going to be photos, videos, of course, personal stories. 
um, it, that's, that's what's going to grab a donor's attention on social media as well. So um, make sure that that's a key focus of your social media strategy. Um, and then finally, uh, live streaming. This year is a little different. Um, there's not a lot of live events happening um, and live stream can be a really great way to connect with your donors, uh, update them on how the challenge is going, what you're raising funds for. Um, it can be a nice way to connect and kind of build community with your supporters during the challenge, even if you can't be in person. Um, and of course the uh, stewardship, the donor communications, the strategy doesn't end when the challenge ends. Um, there are thank you tools built into the platform, as we talked about already, but you'll want to go beyond those and uh, have your own thank you strategy in mind, uh, whether it's a personal thank you for donors over a certain amount uh, or whatever makes sense for your organization, but having that strategy planned ahead of time will be helpful. Um, closing the loop after the campaign to let donors know uh, the impact that your organization will be able to have with the funds you raised in the challenge can be really important in uh, helping that donor see the value of their gift and encouraging them to come back and give again to your organization in the future. Um, great to have special attention for first-time donors and first-time fundraisers. Uh, how will you communicate with them during and after the challenge? Uh, thanking them for their efforts, their contribution, and keeping them engaged with your organization. Um, and it's especially important to think about your welcome strategy with those donors that come in through any peer-to-peer -peer campaigns. Uh, they're, they're almost a step removed from your organization and that they came and made a donation because their friend asked them to. So the burden is on your organization after they make their gift to then start to develop a relationship with that donor. How can you provide them information about the work that you do, more opportunities to get involved, uh, to try and develop a direct relationship with that or with that donor uh, for the future. Uh, of course, all of this is just part of your year-round stewardship and communication strategy. So a few minutes left here. I'm just going to cover a few key reminders and then we'll have time for any questions if there are any. So of course, key dates to keep in mind. Wednesday, October 7th, 12 p.m. noon, the challenge will begin. The challenge ends Friday, October 23rd, 12 p.m. noon. A toolkit is available up on the website. Lots of great information there. The recording to today's webinar, the recording to last week's webinar or our previous webinar, uh, tips, FAQs, email templates, etc. all there to help make your uh, campaign planning easier. And finally, uh, support. We are here. Uh, the Mighty Class team is here to help you with any questions you have throughout the challenge. Uh, you can access our self-help forum, support.mightycause.com, that has walkthroughs, videos, how-to articles. Um, you can email us at support at mightycause.com. You can call us. Uh, we are here, uh, ready to answer your questions Monday to Friday, 9 to 5 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, so please do reach out if you have any technical questions. And now I will see if we've had any questions come in throughout the webinar. If you have any questions that you haven't asked yet, you can feel free to go ahead and do so now. I'm not seeing any questions that have come in just yet. So I'll give just a moment in case anybody is typing a question in now. And again, if you do have questions after today, uh, you can go back and review the webinar on the nonprofit toolkit, or you can email us at support at mightycause.com and we will be happy to uh, help answer your question. All right, it doesn't look like we have any questions coming in. Oh, maybe we do. Here we go. Uh, great question. We have a challenge grant of $25 for every new recurring gift uh, established. Does the challenge page handle that? Um, that is a great question. As of right now, the matching grant uh, tool on the platform does not have a way to only count recurring gifts uh, towards a matching grant. So uh, if you were to use, uh, use the matching grant tool that we have on the platform, it would be limited to um, you know, uh, $25 
per donation. There's no way to only count it for recurring gifts. Um, you can certainly still communicate that challenge. You can add that information uh, into the story section of your page to talk about that. And then it will be really easy for you during the challenge. You um, should have a separate report in your donations report uh, tab that just shows recurring donations. So that will be a really easy place for you uh, internally during the challenge to keep an eye on your progress towards um, your goal of new recurring donations. So you'll see the metrics, kind of the totals of, of specifically recurring gifts happening during the challenge there. Uh, you can easily download a report there of just, um, you know, just recurring donations. So uh, post event, you can download that information and see the total number of uh, just recurring gifts that were established during the, the challenge. So hopefully that helps. Um, again, feel free to contact us at support and we can talk through the plan a little bit more. Um, but uh, that's a, a great idea uh, to kind of use this as a chance to uh, to build a recurring giving program. So hopefully that is a helpful answer there. Um, and I don't see any other questions just yet. So I'm going to go ahead and let everyone get back to their day. Uh, thanks again for joining us today. I appreciate your time and attention and uh, good luck with the Give Atlanta Challenge. Um, please feel free to reach out to us, support at mightycause.com with any questions. Thanks so much.